Hello and welcome to the CPD Group podcast. This podcast is the final part of a three-part series. If you've missed parts one and two, feel free to go back and listen or carry on listening for some helpful tips about blended learning. This might be a bit of a difficult question, this one. So just to kind of almost... As opposed to the easy ones you've asked. The easy ones so far, yeah. But, uh, you know, in a... Trying to summarise, in a nutshell, the pros and cons of online and classroom training. I mean, is that an impossible question for no. you, or is that something that you can can give us your wealth of experience on? No, not, not only is it not a, a difficult question, it's, it's a question that is fundamental to the learning experience for the person who's, who's taking your course. Um, it, people quite often will say, and this is... Um, uh, in the, the great pedagogy, you know, one of the things is that people say, oh, well, online learning isn't as valuable. Okay, that's kind of making your own rules up first and then saying it doesn't fit them to some extent. Um, so I think the, the first thing I would say is I would suggest uh, an attitude, just like attitude adjustment uh, uh, sometimes for people to stop looking at online as a lesser teaching method uh, because you... you, you Comparison, you know, it's, it's apples and oranges. Comparisons. Forget any comparisons. Forget the culture. Focus on what you're doing in that particular environment and look at its advantages. So online, um, instead of looking at it and going, "Oh, well, there's no interaction. It's failed to do," that, and you just you're approaching it from a negative. But look at the positives. Online has one massive thing in its favour, which is that anybody taking an online course can stand up and walk away and go and get a cup of tea and sort the kids out because they're fighting in the next rooms and take the dogs for a walk and still come back. Try doing that in the middle of a lecture at university, see how long you, you're still a student there. You know, it, it's, it's, it's got this advantage of time frame. Um, it, 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 uh, the time ellipse, if you like, the beginning and end of the time process on a learning an online learning course is elastic. So use that. That means you don't have to teach an hour at a time. You can teach five minutes at a time, ten minutes at a time. If they want to go on, they will. If the learner wants to push to an hour at once, let them push to an hour at once. But give them the opportunity to walk away in five minutes. So shorter is, is the key word there. Um, the other thing you've got online that you don't have in a classroom is uh, the ability for uh, a learner to go back and reassess what they've done. So... Um, uh, a friend of mine uh, built a learning platform and he, he does quite regularly does these podcasts and he, uh, he, these um, video vlogs you know about content and one of the things he advised I took up and I thought that's a wonderful idea he said look for points in the course where you can say we talked about this in module one do you want to nip back and have a look at it mm. you can't do that in classrooms that's true that is something you have that is a marvellous tool use it interactively send them back you know and you're engaging the learner they're back in the course quizzes online are an expectation good gamification you can use focus on that content and it will produce a very good learning online learning experience in the classroom those things are not possible to you several of those things are just not available to you but what is available to you is one-on-one -on -one interactive questioning body language getting to know the students you know um Ad hoc is the one thing you have in a classroom. I genuinely believe this is the biggest advantage in a classroom. And I can hear, you know, if you listen quietly, you can hear the screaming of pedagogy in the background telling me I'm wrong. But it's, um, I believe ad hoc teaching is, is as valuable as anything. And back in the old days of Ofsted, when they used to give you three grades, um, I, uh, apologies to the Ofsted inspector, I stole your notes and had a look at why you graded me. And... Um, <laughs> And I, and I did a, a session where I went off script, you know, because you had to be very carefully produce learning plans and, by the way, do teaching plans and things for your classes, know where you're going, but don't be frightened to go off script. And in this particular thing, somebody asked a question and it led it all the way down a different alleyway for an hour, half an hour of a, of a one hour session. And I thought, oh, I'm going to get a four for this. I used to be very one to four. And when I looked, I wait till she wasn't looking and sneaked to look. And I've been given a one, and what she complimented was the fact that when the learners were learning, it was recognised and allowed to happen. So that's your face-to-face -face advantage. Let the learners learn. You know, don't try and force it. It's not going to work. Yeah. Bring them into your world. Teach them the, uh, teach them the fundamental, and then let them apply and learn them. And one that applies to both of them is practical application of what you're teaching in their world. 
So for example, um, when we did safeguarding uh, for things like um, uh, swimming pool attendance, the scenarios were all based in swimming pool environments. Don't give them a scenario that isn't, you know, based in that. Try and put the learning inside the learner's world so they can access it on a, a personal level. And, and again, that's across both. That's a really good method across both of those training things to, to make sure the learner's getting engaged. That sounds like some really sensible viewpoints, to be quite honest with you. I mean, a lot of that, what you've just said, makes complete and total sense, especially that piece about putting it in the environment there right at the end, where, you know, how are they going to learn if you if they're, you know, looking at a completely different environment for the, the same topic? You know, it's not their world. It's not what they're going to be applying Absolutely. it to. So it makes no sense, really, to, to bring it outside of their own arena, does it? You know? Absolutely. And it personalizes your course as well. Yeah, I mean, that's the other thing. You know, the, the learning that you're doing, um, the more you can personalize that, it's, it's no different than anything. You know, a lot of my work these days is in marketing and, and, and persuasive copywriting and things. Um, it's no different than that. The, the, the smaller the target audience, the more you can narrow down mm. any type of content to an individual to make it personal to them, the better it's received. And that's true in the classroom as well. The more that you can make that personal to those learners, the better it's received. Brilliant. Brilliant stuff. The next kind of area I was hoping to have a quick chat with you about and explore is blended learning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what's your views? What's your advice and guidance around the whole world of blended learning? Right. Okay. Um, let's see. We could do a whole podcast on this, Andy. Um, okay. Blended learning is probably... Uh, I, 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 okay, let me just say, I love blended learning. I think blending, the idea of blending online and, and, and face-to-face learning, whatever form that takes, is so obviously the right way to go. The resisting that is, is you know, it's, it's madness to resist that. What a great option. You can take the best of both worlds. And, and again, this is about, if you're going to go for blended learning, again, it's about design. So... You get the the um, the option to take all that good stuff we just talked about about classrooms and all that good stuff we talked about online learning and the stuff that goes across and just make something that is a is a holistic product. It's a, it's a great big delivery system of of the best way of delivering the knowledge you're trying to deliver in the best environment. What's you know what could be wrong with that? How could that possibly go wrong? Where well, you could do it back to front is the obvious way it can go wrong. But as long as you're aware of how blended learning works and what that may mean, um, a little bit of homework here for, for, for you as the person creating the course. If you're not familiar with blended learning, to just sort of backtrack a minute, when we talk about blended learning, we're talking about, usually we're talking about a mix of online and face-to-face, but not necessarily. Sometimes it's online with middle grounds like Zoom collaborative learning or conference learning more and more, you know, what's been done at a conference, for instance, in a general kind of, um, uh, 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 um, uh, you know, professional environment, then be added to an online course which later results in a face-to-face meeting with all the the people to reinforce what it is and check the learning in, in, in in a formal environment or whatever. But when we're talking about blended learning, we're getting rid of those annoying divisions between this and it, and it comes back to everything I said several times now, blended learning done right for the learner is, is the most, uh, has the potential to be the most effective form of learning possible. You take the best of both worlds, put them in one big pot, you know, shake them up and out comes the perfect course if you, if you know what you're doing. But it does require a little bit of background learning for the, for the, um, uh, the tutor, the, the coach, the lecturer, whatever. Because, you, you know, we tend to be focused on these ideas of what learning is um, and sometimes that will force us into an environment where we'll go, oh, yeah, it's just a PowerPoint need for this. That's how we do this online. I don't necessarily mean it's the right thing to do. And if you've got blended learning, it really needs to be online. Would it be better in the classroom? That stuff you do in the classroom that's a bit dull and a bit boring. Well, you know, with five online sessions and pick it up next live session or whatever. Or, you know, they've been to a conference and the whole conference was about... Yeah, I don't know, you know, the, the, the place of equestrianism in the modern world. They've done all sorts and they've chosen to pick various things. Pick all that knowledge up and do a follow-up on, you know, stable management. That, that If you know they've been to that thing, you can assume prior learning. Mm. And, it's, and that's what blended is and that's what it, it, where its strengths are. I love the idea of blended learning. I don't get to do it very often. I love the idea of blended learning. 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's a really effective model myself, you know, and lots of training providers as well, you know, not just for the learner perspective, but from from the training provider's perspective as well. You know, it's an efficient mm. way of doing training, you know, maybe putting all the theoretical side of things online, as you say, picking it up at a later date, mm. you know, in the classroom environment to make sure learning's been received. And then any practical elements, you know, while you're there in the classroom, get those done, you know. So essentially, we're finding that training providers can fit in more delivery of training mm. because of the fact that half of their time their learners are spending online rather than being in the classroom uh, you know consistently with them absolutely you know, so it's from a professional basis the training providers are benefiting from branded learning as well as the learners yeah and, and i tell you you hit on something there that is is another really good reason for blended learning which is the idea that you when you're teaching a technical course mm. um I, I find it, I despair sometimes when people say, oh, well, it's an academic course. And I think, what do you mean? If it hasn't got any practical use whatsoever, <laughs> then what is the, what's its value? And there's no, I don't believe there's any such thing as an academic course, you know? Um, and the one that people normally say, well, you know, people do philosophy. What's the use of philosophy? I'm a stoic philosopher day in, day out. It's, you know, it, it, it's guiding principles for life for everybody. Of course, it's got a practical application. You just need to make sure that, that that's visible. And blended learning does that. So, for instance, uh, again, if I take my world of, of video production, uh, which, you know, for 20 years as a video producer, if you, you can't do after effects or, or learning PowerPoint editing in a classroom. The, the students need to take that away, and that's essentially what blended learning is. They're going to take that away, take their own equipment and learn to do it and come bring it back next time. But the classroom should be talking about expositional shots, how stories run, how narratives work, how the edit fits to standard narrative practice. Hey, Campbell's a hero with a thousand faces. There's your hero figure. How are you going to put him on screen? Where are you going to line him up? What lighting are you going to use? What sound are you going to lose? Do you need to soundproof the walls? Um, you know, that sort of thing. Sorry, a bit of a joke there from previous. <laughs> but, um, no but, you know, they are the, the, these things... If you teach them separately, they don't work. Blended allows you to put that together, especially technical subjects. I love blended learning. Yeah. I shut up about it now because I'm <laughs> going over the top. But so, yeah, we, we, I mean, it's great detail that you're going into, and I really, really appreciate all the, your thoughts and your opinions and your, your pearls of wisdom on all of that stuff. Now, is there anything else for our viewers and listeners, uh, more pearls of wisdom, to be quite honest, that you could offer in terms of developing training across the board, across the styles? Okay. Um, uh, I'll say it again, learner first. I still believe, you know, uh, remember this is not about you. It's not, it's not about who you are. It's not about, you see a lot of courses where it's somebody's pet subject and they've gone, you know, I'm going to be so enthusiastic about this. People want to learn it. I tell you, I've taught classrooms of first year um, university students in Freshers' Week, the night after Freshers' introduction, mm -hmm down the studio bar and I've got them at nine o'clock to teach them, you know, postmodernism. It's really hard to engage those learners, you know. But it's not about my reluctance to teach them, it's about my um, need to do that. So, you know, put your learner first, always put your learner first. Who are they? How do you talk to them? What do they want to see? And how the environment as well and how do you make what you want them to learn happen best in that scenario take the accreditation framework take your principles your learning goals learning games there's a reason why they ask for um, uh, uh, lesson plans and at the top of every lesson plan is at the end of the session the learner will be able to there's a thing that you want them to do a good course online, face to face, as a, a Scamper magazine article, as, as, as a podcast, as a whatever, you know, anything that you want people to learn, the core value for you always has to be what can I do that will allow this principle that I'm trying to teach, this thing that I want them to learn, as easy as possible for the learner to achieve. And do that, do that. You'll never go wrong as long as you do that. Kevin, wonderful advice. Thank you very, very much for coming to join us. Uh, I've really enjoyed our conversation today. Cheers for that. No worries. Did and, I go uh, on to it? How long is this podcast normally? Is it normally about three minutes? I'll stretch it to 30. <laughs> it's all good. I mean, the information you're sharing today is fantastic. And our viewers and listeners can only benefit from, from being in, you know, viewing or watching or, or having a listen to the podcast. You know, so please do subscribe to our, our channel. That's a CPD hyphen TV. 
Subscribe to the channel and you'll be updated with all of the latest videos that we release and you'll be able to hear the podcast on Spotify as well. So please do engage and there you'll be able to share in the valuable information from professionals like Kevin here. All right, thank you very much, everybody, and we'll see you on the next podcast. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to the CPD Group Podcast. Be sure to tune in next time for more helpful content. See you soon. Thanks for listening to part three of this podcast. Make sure to subscribe for the next episode of the CPD Group Podcast.